The streets of Bethlehem certainly were bustling with activity and with people. In those days, Caesar Augustus had issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his own town to register. Bethlehem was a town belonging to many, and as people came, the merchants of Bethlehem worked diligently to increase the sale of their goods. Women made baskets and beads. Men worked with iron and wood. Each business person hoped that the night would bring success for their families. Likewise, the Roman government used this census as a chance to collect their necessary taxes. They too hoped that their fortunes would increase because of this night. Little did they realize that someone more precious than silver or gold was in their midst, who had come as God's greatest gift that money could not buy. Even today in our busy lives, it is easy to lose focus of that which is most important. There are many distractions that take our eyes off the one who is the author and finisher of our faith. Yet Proverbs is clear that if we will trust in the Lord with all of our heart and not depend on our own understanding, that He will make our path straight. He makes us this promise because He has plans for each of us, plans to give us a blessed hope and a future. If God is for us, who can be against us? Now Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. An angel of the Lord had appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. With the number of people already there for the census, housing was tough to find. So it was no surprise that when Joseph and Mary approached the innkeeper, they were told that there was no room for them in the inn. The best he could offer was a place in a stable with the animals. How strange to think that many people had a place to lay their head that night, and yet the Son of God was unknowingly yet continually turned away and was finally placed in a stable. Without question, the kings of the earth would not have let themselves be turned away and would never have slept with the animals. Think about King Herod in his palace. He certainly would have forced someone to let him sleep inside and undoubtedly he would have received first-rate attention. But the king of kings was not worried about attention. He did not come in pomp and splendor. There were no trumpets sounding to announce his arrival. Instead, the Bible tells us that Jesus, who being in his very nature God, made himself nothing and took on the very nature of a servant, ultimately being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks that night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shined around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Wise men also came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When the shepherds found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them, and all who heard it were amazed. While the crowds in the streets were living life the only way they knew how, Mary and Joseph were in a stable with Jesus, the Savior of the world, who had come to bring life, and that more abundantly. You see, Jesus is still the same Savior today as he was on that first Christmas, because the book of Hebrews declares that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. No. He's not a baby any longer. The Son of God became a man. He died on a cross for our sins, but He rose again, 
declaring that death and hell had been defeated forever. It's because of the baby from Bethlehem that we can have a new birth, a salvation that brings us out of the darkness and into the marvelous light of His glory, that same glory that those shepherds experienced so many years ago. May the images of this nativity remain in your heart this Christmas season. And may the love of Christ be with you all year long. There is no charge for this event. However, your donations are appreciated as we strive to bring this nativity to you each year. Merry Christmas from First Assembly of God to you and your family.